Yeah, so the Valley Fever package that we introduced in Sacramento is based on four bills. One is uh, AB 1787, which deals with the annual reporting deadline. What we were finding was some people were reporting like in March and other people were reporting in November. So we said, well, let's just have a standard, you know, whether it's March or whether it's November, but let's have the numbers mean something so that everybody's comparing the right numbers year in and year out throughout the 58 counties in the entire state. Uh, the second bill is AB 1788, deals with lab testing. So one of the things that we know is valley fever is so underreported, so we wanted to make sure what can we do to make sure that the reporting is more accurate? How can we get that data? Because uh, the Center for Disease Control actually uh, did an estimate. They said there's at least 150,000 underreported cases. And so and most people that have valley fever don't even know that they have it. They think that maybe they just got the flu. So we have a, a, a bill, 1788, to actually deal with that. The next bill is 1789, and that deals with Cal OSHA standards, making sure workers are safe. Uh, a couple years ago, we saw uh, workers that were out putting up a solar plant, and they all got uh, valley fever and contracted valley fever. So we want Cal OSHA, who's charged with protecting workers, to come, with a plan, come up with a plan specifically for workers dealing in high-risk valley fever areas. And then the last bill is uh, 1790, which deals with doctor training. So I've talked to a couple of doctors and they said, yeah, you know, I had the training. I was able to diagnose uh, patients early. It's meant a world of difference uh, for them and for their health. And so we're trying to do something statewide so we, we can actually have all doctors trained to identify valley fever and help those, help those people. You know, you hear these cases where, well, you know, last year, for instance, in San Luis Obispo, there was actually uh, fatalities. People died from this. Um, and you hear of other people that are just is so dehabilitating that they're confined um, in their homes because, uh, well, here's a good story. I was talking to one gentleman who was like, you know, I kept working and working because I wanted to go to work and, and you know, it's just what I do. And he was saying, I, I got valley fever and, you know, I would be at work and then all of a sudden I would just collapse, you know. And, and so you hear these stories and you want to do something about it. And, and so we're hoping to help. Uh, those types of individuals kind of moving forward. It's, it's a big plan. It's a big package. Absolutely. I mean, you know, Absolutely. Right? So we're going to need everybody's help on this. We're going to need everybody to, to call in, to write in. Uh, that's what makes a difference is actually telling your own story, how it's impacted you, how it's impacted your family, so that we could share those stories with the governor and let him know that, you know, this is a serious issue. This is an issue that affects thousands and thousands of families up and down the entire state. Uh, you know, we looked at the data and we see that um, over 80% of the state actually has contracted cases of valley fever. Uh, it's been reported in 50 out of the 58 counties in the entire state. So even though we call it valley fever, I've been, I've been trying to let the governor know it's not only, only the valley, it's actually the entire state, and this affects all Californians. Uh, but, you know, because of all the work that we've done here in Kern County, um, you know, our doctors are, are keenly aware of, of va valley fever, and so we want to make sure that we have those same resources uh, for those doctors, for those families uh, moving forward. So at the end of the day, what we're hoping to do is have an impact for all of those families, right? I mean, I've heard from so many different families already what it's done to their family, how it's uprooted their families, the medical costs. Um, and then, you know, I talked to someone actually last night and they were talking about not only losing a family member, but they said in another case, the doctor was able to identify valley fever early and actually help mitigate a lot of the risks and the, and the health concerns for them. That's awesome. That's awesome. So hopefully we keep raising awareness. We, uh, we put this on the forefront. We put it on the radar. We need to get the governor on board, let him know how important this is, how it impacts so many families up and down the entire state. Mm -hmm. And I mean, even for Bakersfield, I mean, we see Valley Fever here, you know, quite a, quite a lot. Why is this so important to, you know, our community specifically? Oh my God. I, Everywhere you go, if you talk to somebody, you know somebody that's had valley fever. And that's because we have so many underreported cases. So imagine how many more people out there are being affected. We, see a, we saw a spike in the numbers last year. There's over 1,700 cases already reported uh, of valley fever. So we know it's, it's a huge impact not only in, in Bakersfield, excuse me, <clears throat> in Bakersfield, but our entire community. And so we want to make sure that we're doing everything we can to help protect people bring the awareness, and then hopefully train some doctors and, and uh, protect people moving forward. So we want to do something. Uh, we promised to try to raise the awareness, raise the bar. You know, we came out with this package of bills to kind of touch on different aspects of it. And uh, hopefully we can get the governor on board, uh, get 
my rest of my colleagues on board. Uh, and the great thing is, you know, this has been a, a bipartisan push. Uh, so far, I've, I've had uh, co-authors, over a dozen co-authors up and down the entire state, Democrats and Republicans. So we're kind of uniting around this. And, um, you know, like I said, we saw the spike last year in valley fever cases. So hopefully we can um, raise that, do, do something to actually help all these families. We just need everybody's help. We need everybody's help in raising raising the alarms, raising the bell, writing letters of support for, for this legislative package and just saying we, we want something to be done on Valley Fever. This is how important it is to us and to our families and to, to people we know. And so I just hope uh, the viewers will join us in that fight and we let the governor know uh, this is important and this is something that we need to do for, for our families. Right, because we don't want to uproot anyone like you're talking Absolutely. about stories. And so I have to ask, government shutdown, do yes. you have any thoughts on that? Um, you know, it's always unfortunate when the government shuts down. Uh, you know, it's a, a lot different world in Washington, D.C. Than it, has, than it is up in Sacramento where we are. You know, we've been focusing on uh, the state budget. The governor came out with his state budget plan last week. Uh, we'll listen to the governor next Thursday with his State of the State address. But, you know, I think it's just uh, it's, it's unfortunate any time you see the federal government shut down and, you know, people can't come to a compromise. Um, you know, and I, and I know when I talk to a lot of families, it's one of the things that, that discourages them about uh, politics and government is, is the partisanship and the bickering. And, you know, at the end of the day, families want uh, government to function. They want it to work. They want it to be accountable. And so, you know, hopefully Congress will get, get their act together and, uh, and we can get some type of compromise, something kind of moving forward and, and uh, make sure, you know, government's working for the people.